If you've ever started looking into RSA encryption or try to check if numbers are primes using Fermat's little theorem or a bunch of different areas in computer science, you'll find that you have to do modular exponentiation with very large numbers. And with large numbers that are seemingly impossible to solve for. And this video, I'm going to show you how you can solve for these and write a simple a simple function to solve for these um, using recursion. So this function will um, solve for modular exponentiation. And so our problem we have here is we have a to the power of b mod c. The percent sign means mod. Um, so a to the power of b mod c. Well, our problem isn't when b is small, it's when b is large, when the exponent is very large. For example, if I want to check if the number 35,237 is prime using Fermat's theorem, little theorem, it will look like this. Um, I'd pick a number 2 and raise it to the power of 35,236 mod 35,237. Well, 2 to the power of 35,236 can't be calculated. Um, it's just too large of a number. And when you do modulus arithmetic, you have to have an exact number. You can't have it round, or else you won't get the right answer. So, to solve this, first we're going to look at the multiplication property in modular arithmetic. So, the multiplication property basically says a times b mod c is equal to a mod c times b mod c and all of that mod c. So, you can take a and b and <coughs> break them up. And so what this would mean, well, we know just by how normal arithmetic works that a to the power of b is equal to a to the power of b over 2 times a to the power of b over 2. So we can split it in half like that. And so that would tell us that a to the b mod c is equal to a to the b over 2 mod c times a to the b over 2 mod c mod c. And we also know that a to the b equals a to the b minus 1 times a. Because that the a is the same as just a to the 1. So that would mean a to the b mod c equals a mod c times a to the b minus 1 mod c, mod, all of that mod c. So, as you can see, we can actually take an exponent and break it in half, or take one piece off of it. On the second line, you can see a to, oh, a to the b over 2, we've broken it in half. And on the fourth line, you can see we've just taken one out of it. And so, our basic idea is we're going to start with the assumption that a to the b mod c is unsolvable. There's no way to solve that. Even if it is solvable, we're just going to assume it's unsolvable in every case. But we're going to assume that a mod c is solvable in every case. So if there's no exponent, it's solvable. If there is an exponent, it's unsolvable. And so we're going to have the conclusion that a to the power of b should be broken apart completely. That basically means we're going to break it into pieces, and so we never actually have to deal with the exponent. So I'm going to show you the basic concept of how you can do this using recursion. So as you can see, I have this box here, and a box has a number, in, an equation. Well, yeah, it has this number in it, and if the number is highlighted, it means it's unsolvable. So here we have, we're going to start with, we want to solve 12 to the 10 mod 5. But we can't solve it because there's an exponent. There's the 10. That's our exponent. So what we can do is we can break this apart using the multiplication property. It, since 12 to the 10, the exponent is even. 
we can cut it in half. And so see, since it's even, we can cut it in half, and now we got two smaller parts. But there's obviously a problem here. These are still unsolvable. They still have an exponent. So, and we can't break them in half again because the exponents are odd. But if we can't break them in half, we can still break one piece off of it. So as you can see, we broke one piece off of each of them. So we got 12 mod 5 and 12 to the 4 mod 5. And 12 to the 5 is actually solvable. It solves the 2. But 12 to the 4 mod 5, those still aren't solvable. So we can, since those are even, the exponent's even, it's 4, we can break that into 2. And so here we got 12 to the 2 mod 5. Those are still unsolvable, but they're still even. So we can break them in half again. And as you can see, when you break them in half again, we get complete, all, they're all solvable, every single one of them, um, because there's no more exponent. And the, all of these solve the 4. And then we can plug the 4 into the ones above it, and they become solvable, and that solves the 1. And we can plug the 1s into the 1 above it, and become solvable, and that's 2. Do the same thing again, and we get 4, and that's our answer. So we solved it using recursion. And so how we can do this in code. So we, we want to start with a function with a, b, and c. Um, I'm just going to call the function emod for exponential and modulus. And so first we want to start with if b equals 0. This is just if someone decides to plug in 0 for our exponent. Um, because anything to the power of 0 is 0. I mean, is 1. So we're going to return 1. But then we're going to check if, if the exponent's even. And you can check if something's even by just doing the number mod 2. And if it's equal to 0, that means it's even. And if it's even, we're going to say, uh, we're going to have a variable d equals to e mod a comma b over 2 comma c. So we're going to call the function we're in. We're going to use recursion. And we're going to call it again with, but we're going to cut b in half. We're going to cut the exponent in half if it's even. And we're going to return um, d squared um, mod c. Because as you can see back here, when we broke it in half, we have, see, 12 to the 5 mod 5 times 12 to the 5 mod 5. So when you break it in half, that's 12 to the 5 mod 5 squared. So right here, we have d squared mod c. And then we have one more part. We have else. The last else, this is when, this is when it's not 0 and it's not even. This is basically when it's odd. And if it's odd... Remember, we only break one piece off of it, and a mod c is solvable, so we don't have to send that back in recursion. But um, a to the power of b minus 1 isn't, so we're going to send that back. So we're going to do e mod a comma b minus 1 comma c, and that, that this is for when it's odd. And then we're going to do all of that mod c. And that's pretty much it. That's the... That's all the code you need. This will solve that massive math problem I showed you at the beginning. They will solve it in a second.